Um, Justin, I'll start with you. Um, and I guess and I know we have to address it to one person, but all you guys, I'd be interested to, to hear what you think. Um, even the coach has said it, everybody says it, it goes more quickly than you think it will. Has it felt that way to you? Yeah, for sure. I think um, a lot of times early in your career, you're kind of just trying to, you know, keep your feet wet, you know, do do all the right things. And then when you get older, you kind of enjoy a lot more. And I know all of us have really been enjoying this year and it's just flew by. So um, it's, it's a tough thing because obviously you don't want, you know, this brotherhood to come to an end, but it has to. So I think for all of us, it's just really enjoying those moments. Yeah, and I can agree to that. Um, especially in terms of finally getting to um, a position in which I feel like I'm making a, a larger impact and influence. Um, it feels like I finally gained my grounds and uh, gotten past just getting my feet wet. And then, you know, you blink and you're towards the 11th and 12th games of the season. So um, just got to do the most with what I have left. Yeah, and you're so focused each week, you know, this game, this game, this game. It's, it's just that one week of game, and and they fly by. You know, I didn't even realize that this would be – this is the last home game till after the last game because the last game is what I was focused on last week. So, you know, it really came fast, especially from the beginning of the season. We had captain's meetings, and Coach Fitz said, hey, we're going to be at the last one before you know it, and it's already before you know it. So it's just – it's kind of bittersweet, you know, at any end. Kyle, can you take us to, um, not Kyle, I'm actually meant Tyler in this case. Can you take us to, um, through your recruitment? I guess you were planning to play center in college, and then Fitz said you had a great camp, and he immediately thought, saw you as a D lineman. Yeah, um, so I pretty much strictly played offensive, offensive line in high school. I played D line every, every now and then, just get a big body in there, take somebody out. But, uh, uh, I thought I'd be an offensive lineman, but you know my dream was to play college football. And so as soon as um, I set my eyes on Northwestern, this was the prize. You know I got a few smaller offers here or there. Um, recruiting started to pick up, um, especially after I went to the opening in Oregon. Um, but by that time, I already come to ca come to the camp at Northwestern, and I think Brad North committed the day before. And so, like, they already had a bunch of offensive linemen for my class, and so they tried me at D-line. You know, Coach Long saw me broad jump, and it was a 9-4, and he was like, wow, we don't have DBs that can do that. And so, <laughs> and so, and so, uh... I can do that. <laughs> you weren't there, though. Um, so, so they gave me a chance, and they offered me, and he asked, you know, what I'd want to play, and I said, whatever will get me on the field. So, um, yeah, that was pretty much it. I do, absolutely. You know, off, <laughs> offensive line. You know, you got to wear every brace known to man. You got to just stump around. You know, D line. You got to be quick off the ball, uh, agile, athletic. You know, I'm not saying offensive linemen aren't athletes. Right, <laughs> exactly, but uh, but I do think you have to have the better athleticism as a D lineman. <laughs> Um, this is for Kyle. Um, Purdue threw it 61 times on Saturday. That's the most any team has thrown against you this year. What was it like in the bat defensive backfield uh, facing uh, that? You know, honestly, I wasn't that happy because, you know, they threw it a bunch of times. I didn't feel like I got enough opportunities myself. Um, but um, a lot of those throws were checkdowns and uh, dump throws. I think he, they threw the ball 61 times, uh, 398 or so yards. It's like six yards in attempt and on completions, a little bit over 10 yards in attempt, mostly just checkdowns and then run for a few yards after that. Um, their longest completion was 35 yards, which that may have been um, that may have been the fake punt. Um, I'm not. I'm, I could be mistaken, but either way, I'm just saying a lot of it was, you know, dinks and dunks. Um, so with with the defensive line, the front seven playing the way that they're playing, we need to understand that we're going to get a lot of passes from a lot of teams, um, especially in this season. Towards the second half, teams have constantly just abandoned the running game. Um, they only ran the ball for 40 yards and less than two yards of carry. So with that understanding, we know on the back on the back half of our team, that we're going to get attacked, and we have been all year. Um, 
And, you know, it doesn't help our stats, but um, in a way, numbers are for losers because um, we only gave up 13 points as a whole. So, yeah. Uh, anybody take this? Fitz said on uh, Saturday, he was talking about the grinding that this team does. And then he said, we didn't get the, we didn't get the return on that right away, but they didn't stop. What kept you guys going when you did not get the return? You know, I think it started with the leadership. Um, we dug ourselves a hole in the beginning of the season, and, uh, you know, we just all made a conscious decision to pull ourselves out of it. And, uh, you know, the younger guys, they're going to follow what we do. So if we continue to have a positive attitude, as we did, um, we just continue to show up and have passion at practice. So. Um, as soon as we were in that hole, um, it started with the leadership. We knew we could pull ourselves out of it, so we did. Yeah, I can agree to that. Um, in the DB room, more specifically, um, Goblin and I, we were just having a um, just a basic conversation that we have just in the locker room with a lot of DBs around. We were just talking about how um, we have the decision at this point in this juncture in the season to we can win out or we can end up allowing some of our early stifles to keep us from a bowl game and keeping us from having the type of season that we already imagined that we would have. Um, so with that, we just made the decision. And I don't think necessarily a lot of things changed. We just did what we did better and harder because we realized that it wasn't getting it done um, at that point in time. So all you could do is just keep going. Kyle, and then if Justin also has a thought on this, what did you guys think when uh, the number one jersey was awarded to uh, Tyler? Duh. Like, it, was, it seemed like a no-brainer. Um, a guy who embodies everything that, you know, we talk about in this program um, and, and walks the talk as well, if he even talks. I mean, he, it's mostly just by his actions. Um, and a guy who's been a leader on this defense since day one, for sure. Um, so it seemed pretty obvious for me. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone knew that he, uh, you know, they saw the way he worked, not only just throughout his career, but like, I mean, going in his last year, the type of work he was putting in the offseason, it's just like, it's a no brainer. Um, he's definitely the leader, um, one of the leaders on our defense and the leader of our defensive line, which is probably one of our best performing groups. Um, and he's just, I mean, worked from a lot of adversity throughout his career, like a lot especially early on, a lot of adversity, and he just worked through that um, and always had a positive attitude um, and always just been a, a great teammate. So I think it was pretty obvious for him. <laughs> I've seen it one other time, maybe on Max Chapman, but still not nearly the same size yeah. human as, as Lanny. It makes him look bigger. I don't know why, <laughs> <laughs> which is a scary thing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Kyle, you've seen four of your teammates called for targeting this year. And and since you're out there uh, um, in situations in open field a lot where you have to make a, a quick decision, has it has it changed the way you play or think through a play at all? Do you have to be more tentative? Um, that's actually a tough question to answer um, because on one end, you know, Coaches and players talk about, you know, we want to play free without constrictions and just allow us to make plays because this is the things that we've been doing our whole lives. But um, we just understand that there's stipulations and regulations, boundaries that are now on our game, and it's for the betterment of it. So with that, you just kind of take it and understand it and try to play within, you know, that structure. Um, and the play on Montre uh, on Saturday, that was kind of a tough call or, or just – a tough case because as the uh, long snapper caught the ball, he was already starting to slide down. Um, you know, you're not supposed to hit a def defenseless receiver above the shoulder pads, but that was only one of the only areas that you could hit him because he was already sliding down on his legs. Um, so, I mean, I'm not necessarily sure what he could have done in that situation. Um, and I don't think anybody's necessarily been just – I rate over the rulings. It's just, man, sometimes wrong place, wrong time, and we're trying to be football players, but we're also trying to be safe. So, all three of you maybe could answer uh, 
what does it mean to be ranked in the top 25 and after, especially after your start that you had? Does it give you a little extra incentive to keep it going? Uh, I don't look at rankings at all. Um, uh, we know what we have in our locker room. We know what we have in this room. And it, whatever they think of us outside of it doesn't change anything. Um, unfortunately, I might say the opposite. <laughs> as, as, as a senior and, you know, a potential leader in the, in the defensive back group, you know, I just challenged our, our guys um, in our room that, you know, this is going to be our last opportunity as seniors, and we want to go out not only on top every single week, but also just put Northwestern on the platform even further for our further endeavors years to come um, and just continue to gain respect for the program. Um, I don't – and Coach Fitz talked about, you know, potentially getting bored with winning. Um, I just I wanted to make it clear that it needs to be – it needs to be a habit. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll mediate between those two. Um, on the one hand, yes, I do. You know, I agree with Kyle. Like, it is awesome to put, you know, our pro program on that platform um, and really see all the work, you know, that we have been putting in come to fruition. Um, but, you know, like Tyler was saying, like, I mean, a lot of, no one believed in us before, and now all of a sudden people believe in us again. Like, it, it doesn't matter to us, like, because we always believe in ourselves and we always put that work. We've been putting the work in and it's just kind of we're seeing it more on Saturdays now. So that's kind of what it comes down to. Uh, what was the board with winning? <laughs> he told you guys that? Um, yeah, that was that was a little something after, uh, after the game um, in terms of, you know, we weren't as quick to, you know, jump around and do our dances and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know. That's just something that I guess he caught his attention, and uh, immediately he wanted to nip that in the butt, and that it just needs to be an infectious, contagious thing. That you know, it's hard to win in the Big Ten, and we need to continue doing it. That was right after the Purdue game when he came Correct. in. Correct. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, any chance? So the basketball men's basketball team is also ranked, as you guys know. First time. Exactly. Both. Have you any you by any chance had any interaction with those guys? Joked about how both teams are ranked? Anything along those lines? Uh no, I talked to them a little bit. I mean, I think they're really excited. Obviously, they had a great year last year, and they're trying to um, pick up, you know, where they left off. Um, but it's really cool they they're ranked uh, right away. Like that's just shows a lot of respect for the program. So, um, and for where you know people think they're going, uh, I think they know that they can be really good this year. And uh, obviously, we saw that and didn't lose much. You know, we lost a a, a, a few key role players, but like our, our solid core is back. So. Um, I think they're expecting a really big year um, from themselves. So kind yeah. of just reflects it. Uh, I just, I mean, we see a lot of them around. Brian, Vic, Scotty, all those guys. I mean, Gavin, we see him in the training room out here in the fueling station. So it's good that we're back on the winning end, too, because uh, early in the season, some people had labeled us as a basketball school. So yeah, uh, come on, bro. <laughs> just just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, just they know who they are. <laughs> Clayton on Saturday talked about the incoming and how this was a special group of guys. And we've heard that over the years, it's a special group of guys. What makes this group so special? Special guy. I mean, <laughs> it's the relationships we've built. Um, I can't, re like, most guys are here for five years together. Um, you know, everyone argues that they're the closest group, but, you know, I'm going to argue that we have the closest group. Um, we do everything outside of football together and, and, you know, we're here all day together, but, you know, I think it's just the personalities that we have, you know, we're all so different and we're also, um, from different backgrounds and very diverse, but, you know, we came together really well and formed a brotherhood from the start. So I think that's just carried over over these five years. Yeah. Wait, quick question. Clayton was talking about the end for him, the end for him. No, 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 no. Oh, not for him. <laughs> Just, oh, the team. Oh, gotcha. Um, I, I guess. <laughs> um, no, I've been a part of four teams uh, here, and yeah, I definitely agree with Ty. Like, this is the closest we've been, and I think it's shown on the field. Like, you know, we had a tough start, but like we all believed in each other. Um, and every single time we go out there on Saturday, like we all have that belief, um, and 
each other, like on the same side of the ball and on the opposite side of the ball. Um, and I think that's helped elevate our team.